Douglas Cooling and Heating. Serving the Birmingham area for 38 years. 988-3706. That's Douglas. I'm James Spann. This is the morning edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 21st of November. Yeah, a little too warm for Thanksgiving week, and inevitably we'll have the chance of strong to severe storms early in the week and then again over the upcoming weekend. So a lot to talk about. Let's begin with some of the Skycam shots early this morning, and wow, a little foggy. Say a little foggy. How about real foggy? That's the view coming from uh, Tuscaloosa. And uh, looking back to the east, you can see the First Baptist Church down below, and that's about it. Visibility very restricted there. We'll go up to Fayette. Uh, the fog there is a bit lighter. That's uh, downtown Fayette in northwest Alabama. And there's the Auburn Sky Cam, and you bet we'll be watching that one closely this week because it is Iron Bowl week. And let me tell you now, it's going to be a very close call for this ball game. Uh, they could be uh, in dry conditions, or they could be in the, in the midst of a monsoon out there on Saturday. It all depends on the timing, and I'll tell you now, we're not going to be able to be very specific about that until we get this midweek system out of here. So there'll be a lot of speculation on that game, and yes, there is no doubt we could see some very active weather, and, and we will over the coming weekend, but exactly when, it's a bit too early to uh, make that call. Check the uh, water vapor satellite shot this morning. We got a big trough back in the southwest really over the uh, Baja Peninsula and the Gulf of California. And ahead of that, we've got this stalled surface boundary that's uh, kicking up quite a fuss. There's the temperatures. You pick out the front there. you got 20s and 30s over uh, parts of Oklahoma and Kansas. And on the other side of that front, we've got 60s and 70s. So uh, it's not going to move much at all today because it is parallel to the upper air winds. Uh, there's the radar this morning at 521. A lot of rain falling north of us, and that's where the heaviest rain will be today. Uh, along that Interstate 40 corridor, Memphis to Nashville. Uh, in fact, uh, there might be some flooding issues up there. We'll check the uh, watch warning map. We've got flash flood watches in effect for a pretty good chunk of Arkansas, some of the adjacent states. And we note those uh, counties in the darker purple, those are counties that are flash flood warnings in Oklahoma and Arkansas. And then down here, we have the dense fog advisories for South Louisiana, southern half of Mississippi and parts of South Alabama. And again, obviously from the sky cam shots, the fog is pretty thick in spots around here as well. All right, convective outlooks today, uh, or for the next few days. This is today. Got the standard slight risk over a pretty good chunk of uh, Texas and the adjacent parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and down around Shreveport. And tomorrow, the risk moves east. Uh, this is until, you know, valid until Wednesday morning at 6 a.m., Got the uh, standard slight risk over almost all of Alabama except the, except the southeastern counties, all of Mississippi, much of Tennessee and Louisiana, and the higher probabilities of severe weather are over north and west Alabama, that 30% area there. That's uh, basically from about Gadsden down to Clanton and Grove Hill and points north. So it includes a pretty good chunk of our territory. And again, we'll, we'll look at the specifics in just a moment. And this is day three for Wednesday, just the low-end 5% probabilities off to the east. And the rain for the next five days. Uh, this is valid through Friday evening at 6 o'clock, suggesting about one inch for the northern half of Alabama. The bigger totals are north and west of here, where those flash flood watches are in effect. All right, let's look at the 06 CGFS. This is valid at 6 o'clock this evening. Got the 588 ridge over the gulf. The shortwave is lifting out of the southwest, and down below that, uh, active convection is likely across parts of Texas and Oklahoma, and again around here, north of here. There, there might be a shower, a bit of drizzle in spots, but uh, uh, significant rain not expected today or tonight. Now, tomorrow, the uh, wave is beginning to come through. The dynamics come into play. This is 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, and down below that, we have a sur surface load that's located near Cincinnati, 1,008 millibars with a trailing front. And again, you know, th this is... I don't think going to be a red letter day here. It's uh, not overwhelming with numbers like that, but certainly that's supportive of some severe weather. We'll pick at the RPM. This is the uh, high resolution model, and, and I'll tell you now the RPM is a little bit of an outlier. It's it's kind of too slow compared to some of the other models. This is valid at six o'clock tomorrow evening, and you can see that the concern we've got the squall line to the west, and there's the possibility of these discrete storms that form out ahead of that. Like in fact, it's got one sitting over Birmingham there at six o'clock tomorrow evening. So. That's the concern. This is midnight tomorrow night. The squall line is still over Mississippi. And then Wednesday at 6 a.m., the cold front is actually passing through here. And by noon Wednesday, it's out of here. But again, the other models are faster with this. 
But I think in, in respect with this, we'll mention some chance of a stray shower maybe early Wednesday morning, but clearly by midday it should be out of here. This is the look on the GFS at uh, noon Wednesday. And it's got everything pretty much out of here. The surface low is well to the northeast with the front down around Dothan. And it might be kind of cloudy-ish throughout the day Wednesday. Clearing could be slow if this is right. All right, let's check the uh, instability values. This is off the NAM. This is the surface-based CAPE, valid at midnight tomorrow night, midnight Tuesday night. And uh, this is suggesting instabilities of uh, 1,000 to 1,500 joules over Alabama ahead of the front. And that's certainly supportive of severe weather, kind of like the deal last Wednesday. You know, it's not overwhelming, but certainly supportive of, uh, of some strong to severe storms. Helicity values are somewhat marginal at this point. I, I think clearly tomorrow night the main risk is going to be from just, you know, Boeing segments and straight line winds with the uh, squall line. Is, uh, those are not overwhelming. And that certainly that will support sustained updrafts. But if we're going to see a tornado threat, it would probably be tomorrow evening, I think. Uh, with any cells that develop out ahead of the squall line. And again, it's not an overwhelming threat. The main issue, I think, with this thing will be strong straight line winds along the front. And there's the EHI at midnight tomorrow night, the Energy Helicity Index. And it, it wraps up to about a 1, which is certainly significant. So I, I would say it's comparable to the, last, you know, the deal we had last Wednesday. Main threat from strong straight line winds, a few isolated tornadoes not out of the question, and we'll be watching carefully. Now, the good news, Thanksgiving Day is going to be beautiful. Sunny with uh, a high in the 60s, just perfect. Black Friday looks good. Uh, sunny highs probably inching up maybe around 70 as we start to warm up again as the winds kick into the south. And, ooh, boy, all right, this – I'll tell you now, you know, of the two events, the midweek event and the weekend event, this is the one to be a little more concerned about. A lot of people are traveling, uh, you know, this is uh, Saturday at noon, and that trough speaks for itself. There's the surface chart. The surface low is developing near Cape Girardeau, Missouri, with a trailing band of showers and storms. Now, if this is right, okay, the, you know, maybe we can squeeze in that Auburn game before the storms get here, but I'm sure not going to guarantee that. It, you know, timing could be way off this far in advance. We'll go to midnight Saturday night, and again, that looks uh, pretty nasty. 1,004 millibar low at Nashville with a, a really rough line of storms coming through and very cold air flooding in behind that thing. So again, uh, very significant, uh, you know, activity here. And then Sunday, wow. <laughs> Woo, buddy, that's an incredible uh, surface, uh, say upper low forms out there. And the surface low is up at Indianapolis. And look at the 540 line coming in here. This is suggesting a chance of snow back with the uh, colder air over Illinois, Missouri, Arkansas. Maybe a few snowflakes down into uh, Tennessee and maybe northwest Alabama. And then Monday, this, this thing just sits there. And it's cloudyish and cold and drizzly and maybe a snowflake or two north of here. So uh, just something to watch. And, and you know what I'm going to say. If you've been watching these videos for a long time, we've got to get through the midweek system before we can really have a good grasp on the weekend system. That's just, you know, that's just the way it works. So be aware that is on the table. Uh, the weekend looks very stormy, but we'll be much more specific by Wednesday. All right, the end of the forecast, December the 6th. Upper low to the west, that looks like we're in dry air. And, of course, uh, we all know that's uh, voodoo out there. All right, that's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. The next video here by 3.30 or so today. And if you're local to us, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 in Birmingham at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great Monday, and God bless. Do you heed tornado warnings? The National Weather Service has Some people say the Weather Service cries wolf far too often. Warn you, warn, and there's not, no tornadoes, then people become complacent. Hear why complacency may have contributed to April 27th's high death toll. Monday at 10.